Hi everyone, I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop. Tonight's video is something new. It's a do-it-yourself video. Uh, and this is my very first time filming in this format. So I'm not very comfortable with it. Uh, there's not much fluidity to it. I jump around a lot. A lot. It's probably going to be a little confusing. So hang in there. If you sort of like the format and enjoy seeing projects, let me know and I will try to perfect my craft and, and get better at it. Uh, let me set this up because I'm going to jump right into the video and it might be confusing. If you've been watching me for a while, you saw me, well, I actually bought this lamp at a flea market a couple of months ago. And uh, it's Art Deco, it has a green pottery uh, vase in the center, but the bottom of it was in a basement and it was rusted out terribly. So I didn't really, what I thought I was filming earlier didn't quite get filmed. So I'm going to jump right into me scrubbing the base of this lamp with, you know, no preamble to what I'm doing. That's the reason why it's a little confusing. So I know I'm jumping around a lot, uh, but I hope you enjoy the, this project video anyway. And as I said, if you do enjoy this kind of a format, let me know and... Um, I'll try to make the next one uh, have a little more fluidity to it so that it looks a little more professional. Okay, so here I am refinishing and restoring two different, one lamp and one light fixture. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, as you can see, I have removed the cast metal base uh, from the rest of the lamp. Uh, it has a nice embossed pattern on it, uh, but it is absolutely covered in rust and pitted with rust. There is nothing on here to restore. It has to be completely refinished. So you see, I'm taking a very stiff wire brush and very aggressively removing uh, the rust. This isn't damaging the metal at all. There's no original finish left on it. So I can be pretty aggressive with this metal brush. Once I get it down to the base metal, I'm gonna prime it and put a new applied uh, finish on it. And uh, it should look really nice. Okay, it's now uh, called a tail of two lamps. Let's zoom on in here and take a look at the final product uh, on the lamp that I did, the restoration that I did. But first, let's get these homegrown Jersey tomatoes out of the way. Yes, this is uh, these are the good famous Jersey tomatoes grown right here in South Jersey, where I'm currently speaking to you from, from where I am currently speaking. Look at the two lamps. Now, let me do some explanation. This lamp I bought several months ago at a Goodwill. It's a black glass, not pottery, but black glass lamp with a fantastic Art Deco finial. And this is all in original condition. Original patina, original finish, factory finish. I did nothing to this. Uh, it hasn't been refinished or altered in any way. That's exactly the way I found it. And this is an old sort of worn finish on the base here, as you can see. This is the lamp that was a hot mess when I got it. And this is the one that was completely rusted. There was no patina, there was no finish on the bottom at all. You remember seeing me sand it just a few minutes ago. There was nothing to uh, restore. This had to be refinished, okay? So I'm gonna come back down and talk to you, tell you what I did to the bottom of it. But this has been completely cleaned. There was so much dirt and filth on this, you couldn't see that it was embossed which you can now. Even this plate over top of the vase is embossed beautifully. This, by the way, is the original finish here. All I had to do was clean this. I didn't do anything to it but clean it, polish it, and put a new coat of lacquer on it and then dull it down a little bit. Here we have two old sockets which I repaired and cleaned and the original finial and everything. And I haven't wired it yet, but you get the idea. 
Uh, I'm filming this in the natural light. I'm in, I'm in the shade, so I hope it turns out well. But as I go down, I am pleased with the way the base looks. If you look at these two bases side by side, I think I did a pretty good job. I'm sort of, uh, well, as you know, I like things to look old, and this to me has an old original feel to it. It is terrible when you just take a can of spray paint and put one coat of paint on it. Um, I think it looks awful. I didn't show you my secret on how I achieved this uh, lovely, worn, sort of old finish, but I am going to show you that in another video. I don't mean to keep it a secret, <laughs> uh, but what I thought was filming, when I thought I was filming it, 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 it didn't turn out, the light was bad, and you, and you didn't really get to see what I did. But take a close look at it. There are several steps to the process to get it to look like this. Um, it looks old now, it looks worn, it looks very similar to this old original lamp base over here, I think, and I'm pleased with that. It also very much matches the, uh, the look and the feel of the original hardware up at the top. So now I'm going to be able to rewire this. I'll do that in another video to show you how to wire a double socket lamp. It's pretty easy. And I'm going to be rewiring it with, uh, well, I'll show you. Hold on, I'll show you in just a second. Uh, well, let me go get it. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. A beautiful old vintage lamp like this must, I repeat, <laughs> must be rewired in reproduction silk cloth cord. This is not inexpensive. It's not terribly expensive, but it ain't cheap. Uh, but I go to the expense of buying this because, in my opinion, it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, you don't see much of the cord, but you can imagine the, what you do see with it coming out of the lamp is going to just make the biggest difference. And I love rewiring old lamps in old original cord with old Art Deco Bakelite plugs as well. So that's going to be uh, in another video. So we'll stand back and let you see. I've got to get this guy wired. I've got to get both of them wired. But they're beautiful table lamps, typical of what you would see circa 1925. I hope you like them. Okay, everyone. Uh, I'm outside, and so I apologize if there's any noise of wind blowing, because it's a beautiful breezy day here. But what I'm going to do is show you a before and an after. This is obviously the before. Now this is a classic 1925 to 1935 ceiling fixture that has been repainted. It's a two socket fixture. The really nice old fat boy sockets are here with the pull chains, but you can see it's a hot mess. Um, the fitters, everything has been painted and uh, this, this whole thing needs to be restored. So if we turn it upside down, we can see this is where it attached to the ceiling, flush to the ceiling, and then the light bulbs would hang with some kind of uh, glass shade. Uh, you're saying, why don't you just scrap that? Because it's got good bones and it is restorable. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take it completely apart, pull the sockets off, I'm not throwing anything away and then all of this is going to get put down into a bucket with some uh, environmentally friendly stripper and I'm going to let it sit for about an hour, let the stripper do its work then we'll come back and get all this awful white paint off and see if we have some nice brass underneath. Okay, so let's get this in the bucket. Okay, I've moved inside away from the wind and what I've done, everything is dismantled. Uh, this is the, these are the chains that attach to the bottoms of the sockets. And I'm actually going to take the time, even if we can't reuse the porcelain sockets, uh, let me get into the, where you can see, I'm actually going to be saving these old uh, brass fat boy sockets, or cases to the sockets, because you, you, this is the original size and shape of socket and putting new sockets on would really ruin the look of it. So I'm going to be stripping these and they're going to be beautiful. These are the two um, fitters that screw on to the bottoms of the sockets and accept the shade, whatever kind of shade you're going to put on there. 
And I've got all the pieces inside of an old paint tray, a plastic paint tray. And I'm going to be using, I don't necessarily promote any specific product. This is a citrus strip. It doesn't have that awful smell. You still do not want to get this on your hands. It is nasty and it will remove the upper layer of your epidermis. I'm not wearing any, any gloves, but when I go to strip this, you bet I will. I've got an old nasty brush that I don't care about. Sorry brush. And I already shook all of this up. And so what I'm going to do now is and I'm checking to make sure you can see. I think you can see. Ooh, okay, we're gonna give it a nice bath here and stir all this around. Now this isn't gonna leak out because we're inside of this plastic tray. You don't wanna do this obviously in a cardboard box. And uh, there is a little bit of a fume to this, but it's not toxic. I'd still do this in a breezeway and not necessarily in a closed up house. Although if you're removing old varnish and paint from interior woodwork, this is the stuff you'll notice though, it's uh, runny. So this doesn't, this isn't the stuff that will stick to horizontal like staircases and whatnot. So, but you can, you can find that. Now I know you're saying, my goodness, he's probably going to be wasting a lot of that. No, this stuff had, you, what, when I'm done with the stripping, I can actually recycle this. I can pour it back into a jar and reuse it. I can get a couple of uses out of it, and, and, and I often do that. So, um, it's, not, it's not that it's all going to go to waste. You'll see. So, this is like basting a chicken, right, ladies and gentlemen? It's just like basting a chicken. It's like barbecue, right? Pretend you're at the grill. Okay, so... Making sure that everybody is getting a nice coating of this orange stripper. And... Then I'm going to let it do its work. I'm going to go away from it, ignore it, move on to another project and let this do its work. Uh, I'm not going to start attacking it right away because you need to let the stripper have time to do its work. I just said that. All right. So let me get this little bit cleaned up off of this painted counter because I do not want to remove the paint from this tabletop or this workbench. Okay. And you may be able to see that it's now with some strippers, you'll you know the paint will begin to bubble right away. This is not that type of stripper. This has to sit and you've got to let this stuff baste or steep, whatever word you want to use, in the stripper and give it a chance to work. But again, the reason I like it is because it is not, it doesn't have those awful fumes. It is, it is safe for indoor use, as it does say on the can. Okay. Beautiful. It's just like Peking, what's that chicken, that orange chicken? that they serve at the re Chinese restaurants. What is that, Ch General Tao's chicken? I don't know. Sweet and sour chicken, not what this looks like. It's a sweet and sour lamp, light fixture. Okay, let that sit, and we're gonna be back to this later, and you're gonna be shocked and amazed and amused and delighted. What do I do while I'm watching paint dry? Play Scott Joplin, what else? Now don't laugh, I'm very rusty.
to the refinishing. Don't quit my day job. Can you see it bubbling up here? You see that? Look, just by using the paintbrush and allowing the stripper to do its work, let me zoom in there. We're starting to get some of that awful paint off. And I'm gonna to continue to let the stripper do its work. And we'll get down to uh, a nice base after a couple of hours, okay? All right, so we're gonna leave that alone. We're gonna come back to that later. The sockets out of the, <clears throat> changing gears, the sockets out of the ceiling light fixture. Here they are, the porcelain innards. And um, this, we wanna remove these pap this paper insulation. It's very important that you use this insulation on your sockets. Uh, this stuff is really dry rotted and there's, I'm gonna replace this, so. And there was water damage on this as well. So I'm peeling all of this off and it will be replaced. Let's get inside these sockets and see what condition they're in. Oh boy, okay. Well, I can already tell you uh, when you're dealing with lamp sockets. Now these got wet. We can see signs of rust. And the, the uh, plate here that holds the pull chain Let's see, these have broken loose, and I'm not gonna be rebuilding these sockets. Um, the mechanism, as you can see, we're not even, it's not even, the spring has come off. Uh, this, is a, this is a hazard, this is a nightmare, so no good. I will save the chains, which I'll strip, believe it or not, and I will save these chains, but the porcelain sockets, no good. I can find new sockets that will fit inside of the old brass uh, sleeves, and that's what gives you the look. When you're installing a new light fixture, you, know, you want to be careful and make sure that the hardware that you're using uh, is in good shape. And there's just so much rust and corrosion, and the pull chains are not working on this one. Uh, this one has come loose as well, so we really have a lot of damage here. These are toast. Okay? Uh, I'm still not going to throw them out because, believe it or not, somebody would rebuild these socket innards. I'm not quite going to do that, so we're just going to get rid of this. Okay, let's go and see how the lamp is doing. Okay, heaven forbid I drop my cell phone in this mess, so let me hold on tightly. We have stepped away for a few hours and take a look at this bucket of mess or pan of mess. But look, just taking the paintbrush, I'm able to wipe this paint right off. The key is, folks, let the stripper do its work. And this orange stripper takes much longer because it's, it, it just does, and it's not as caustic. But it's only been a couple hours. So what I'm going to do now is put some gloves on to protect my hands because it's really going to get messy now. And I am going to be not, probably not salvaging any of this stripper because it's pretty well spent. Um, but I'm going to be pouring this into a can so that it can be safely discarded and not hurt the environment by dumping it in the, in the backyard or something like that. I wouldn't do that. And then I can rinse this off. I'm not going to use a steel wool on this or the abrasive brush that you saw me using to clean the lamp base. Instead, um, I'm going to use a much softer synthetic type of a brush uh, to get the paint out of uh, the intricate details here on the ceiling plate and uh, to get it off of the rest of these parts. And then we'll rinse all of this off and uh, take a look at it. Okay, so we're going to come back to this in just a second. This later. Here is the beautiful pan fixture, light fixture. You, you didn't see me uh, scrubbing it. It's a dirty, nasty mess. I did put gloves on and uh, used a soft bristle brush to get all the paint off. But here we have, and this is the way it would hang from this, it would hang from a ceiling such as this. And we're now down to the old brass. I was not too aggressive 
as to shine it all up and make it look brand new. But all that awful old white paint is gone. I've cleaned off the old uh, cases to the sockets. Let's get this outside where you can see it a little bit better. Maybe in the sun. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And um, I knew that underneath all that white paint was a beauty. And uh, the, let's see. And there's even, we even get to see on here a wonderful patent thing. And we can see that it says, I don't know if you can see that, but it says patented March the 30th. 1920. March the, March the 30th, 1920. And uh, I think it's beautiful. What say you? And then finally, this beautiful lamp here uh, with the new finish on the base. And I have it again sitting next to the antique lamp so to let you have a compare, contrast and compare. I like the way this turned out. I'm pleased with that. I gave it one final coat of lacquer and then buffed it with a 4 alt steel wool to age it and so then I'm going to be wiring it soon showing you how to wire up all the uh, four different so the, the two sockets and then this one's going to be getting wired as well so this project is finished this one is finished I might put a coat of clear uh, lacquer on this don't worry it's not going to change the appearance of it it'll just protect this finish from tarnishing and we're going to come back to this. I haven't had a chance to finish cleaning up the juicer. I'm going to do that. And when I get it back to the kitchen counter, we're going to put a piece of depression glass under there and squeeze a lemon. <laughs> okay, I've got some other projects uh, to show you, but that's going to be it for today. I certainly hope you enjoyed watching. Um, I know there's um, many different ways that you can... There's tips and many different ways that you can do restoration projects. I'd love to hear your thoughts and your ideas. Um, did I do a terrible job? Do you like it? What Should I have left it alone? What do you think? Uh, you won't hurt my feelings. Okay, this is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.